Welcome to the Consciousness Chronicles. I'm Wanda Hamilton. I'll be your host today and we'll be speaking with James Saito. I am a uh, doubler in the mystical arts, Reiki master, holistic healer, and claircognizant. Welcome, James. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. And you? Very well, thank you. Good, good. So you, um, I'm, thank you for having me on. Oh, I decided pleasure. that uh, it was time to actually get out there and you know, speak my truth. It's not often I, I, I get out there. I don't self-aggrandize uh, my lifestyle. And what has transpired in my life, very few people uh, are, are aware of it because I, you know, I'm basically a private person, but I know that we have to get out there and Share our experiences. Share. Share our experiences. Okay. So part of what we're speaking about today is our awakening experiences. And I wanted to ask you, what, what does it mean to you to be awake? To uh, shift your understanding. To see through the veil of forgetfulness and begin to understand uh, everybody's awakening experience is different. Um, but again, having knowing that, you know, what we actually exist in, what is transpiring in this third dimensional matrix, as some people refer to it, um, seeing how mankind is manipulated seeing greater aspects of humanity and beginning to find your own i think would be uh you know it's, everybody's path is a little different when they're going you know when it's going to happen but when it does happen it happens in stages and uh you know we could talk about that if you'd like sure um I guess I would start with is, well, how long have you have, how long have you been awake? And well, think, what oh, was your, your first experience, your first experience uh, with that? It would be around the third, well, the fourth quarter of 2014. Um, I was going through a period of insomnia, as I often do. And, uh, so I grabbed my phone and I went to YouTube and I thought about what would I like to watch? And ever since I was a boy, I had a fascination with, you know, unidentified flying objects, uh, parapsych I wanted to take parapsychology at Duke university. Um, when I was a younger man, uh, I've always had an interest in, you know, ghosts and Bigfoot and the Loch Ness monster and all of that sort of thing. So I thought, well, let's see what people are posting right now regarding UFO sightings. So I started watching, and up came a couple of things. One was um, a podcast by Simon Parks. And at the time, I think his connecting consciousness was on. Uh, that was back when he had JP as a co-host and um, whatever station that was. And the second one was, I found a few nights later. And what Simon had said kind of resonated with me. And so the second one that I found was called dowsing for duality. And I don't know, I mean, synchronistically speaking, I, you know, I, wasn't even aware that, you know, I mean, I, I knew you could douse with a, a Y-shaped stick for water and things like that. But as I got into the video, and this is a couple made by a couple out in Ontario, uh, they were doing pendulum work. And I thought, geez, that's cool. So the next time I was out uh, at a market, I bought a pendulum and started to play with it. And uh, and that's kind of where where it began. 
and I started watching more and more videos and it really resonated with me about, you know, um, because of events that have happened since my childhood that, uh, something was happening. And I think at that point I was aware stepping into a, you know, a state of awakening. But when it comes to dowsing and penduluming, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of uh, Chris Kaler out of Winnipeg. Yes. Yeah. Well, he he became awake through a, through dowsing. So I went and picked up a pendulum. And uh, see if this will focus in. Show me yes. Show me no. Show me energy removal. So what ends up happening is uh, I began to show me energy infusion. Um, what ended up happening was through dowsing, um, I began to waken more until one day in the shower, I'm standing there washing my hair kind of thing. And a very clear voice, my voice, said, hello, James. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you kind of test the water. Is there somebody there? Yes. You know? And what I was able to determine, because this is a long story, um, I was speaking to my higher self. I be, at that point, I became... Uh, Clairaudient. And it's an ability that comes and goes. So naturally, my first reaction was, you know, do I have a tumor? Am I nuts? Um, <laughs> you know, you, you, Fair you, questions. <laughs> yeah, your, your, your 3D human doesn't like the unexplained like that. And I would carry on in my mind, sometimes it'd be very obtrusive, intrusive, where it's, you know, this is not what you should be doing, this, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I could ask questions. I could ask questions regarding what's coming, um, things like that. And the day that I finally found acceptance was the day that I realized that every message that I was receiving was about love and compassion. There was nothing that uh, in any way was malevolent. So that, that was, that, and you know, I mean, we're all still in kindergarten. You know, we, um, our understanding is still limited. You know, um, you know, but I look at others around, like the Kalina Molnars, Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Transcendence well, Brown mm -hmm. and I think to myself oh, yeah. wow they're so gifted you know but I realize it's not a competition you know mm -hmm. this isn't uh, um, you know everybody has their path and one thing that I've learned is that things will happen exactly as they're meant to when they are meant to mm -hmm. And that is important. And anybody who's on a spiritual journey of awakening, don't feel bad that you're not, you know, you don't have telekinesis or, you know, your understanding isn't where you think it should be. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, be grateful. Express gratitude for where you are now. Um, and it's very important. So I do have a question about the uh, using the dowsing. Mm -hmm. What what is causing the the pendulum to move in that way? Well, first of all, when I finally got into it, I set the intention um, that no entity, no consciousness, but my higher self could communicate with me through any form of dowsing, physical dowsing, pendulum dowsing, whatever. Um, and I can ask back and forth, is that you with, on the pendulum? Yes. Um, I think the important thing to understand when it comes to dowsing 
and reality itself is that uh, everything, everything in this dimension is a frequency. You, me, this remote control, that's a um, lower frequency, very dense, so I can't put my hand through it yet. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, when you understand that, it leads me to the, the next step of, of what I was doing. I was told that healing is very, is, is very basic. When we consider that everything is a frequency, everything, then cancer is a frequency. Kidney disease is a frequency. Now you can add or remove frequencies. You can rearrange frequencies. So, and this is why I get, you know, emails saying, you know, I, I have this problem. Can you help? You know, I, you know I'll try. Um, because even having said that, um, were I to walk into a, a hospital room and somebody I know is, is actively passing from cancer, I could attempt to remove the cancer. But it may not be in that person's path for that cancer to be there, you know, not be there. Right. But conversely, it could be the exact moment that I'm supposed to walk in there and do it. And it's the same with anything else. You know, I, I need permission from the person. And if it's allowable by source, then it can be done. If it's not, then it simply can't be done. Right. It's okay. that, that basic. That sort of, I guess, fits into free will? <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. free will, I mean, we have free will. Yeah. You know, this is a, a you know, we, we have free will. Um, but again, if, if I was to try to stray from the path that I'm meant to be on, um, and I've tried, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's quite uncomfortable. It, it, it becomes very uncomfortable energetically. Right. Yeah, because you're, you know, you're deviating from what you are meant to do. So. Now, when you say being uncomfortable energetically, um, can you explain a little bit more about that? Well, I mean, you can... I mean, like, are there physical symptoms or emotional waves oh, well, up and down? Sim or? Physical symptoms, I mean, you know, I mean, that's a whole different topic. But um, mm -hmm. you know how you get that feeling every once in a while that something just isn't right? A sense yes. of foreboding. Uh, that kind of thing that's relentless it's a dark it's a, it's a heavy energy I, I, and uh you know every time i've tried to deviate from the path just say no you know i don't this is not the way i wanted my life to be um it starts to hit you know so you can never really truly leave um what you're supposed to be doing okay you know you'll be um, guided back to it okay Thank you. So um, what was life like before for you, before waking up? Um, tumultuous. Um, I think uh, my life changed about 1976. Um, up to that point, I was just your standard, well, I wouldn't say standard, I mean, I've been smoking these cigarettes now for 52 years. Um, got into my first bottle of booze, I think, when I was 12. You know, started smoking marijuana at 14, and, of course, the drug use just kind of accelerated. Right. Not in a, you know, one of those Catholic, like those Catholic manuals that tell you, you know, marijuana <laughs> leads to heroin. Orgies and bestiality, you know, not that kind of thing. 
but you know, you start right. experimenting with the drugs and uh, yeah. So, and then when I was 15, I started working for rock bands and started touring and uh, you know, working my way up the ladder, so to speak. Um, you know, became a stage manager for Golden Gold Productions and life was a party. Um, life became a constant party. Mm. And uh, it, it ended up being a 35 year party, which. Um, it's a long party. <laughs> it's a long party. And what ended <laughs> up happening, <laughs> what ended up happening was uh, I developed uh varices in my esophagus which um i guess the, the, simple, the simplest explanation is varicose veins mm -hmm. and those are caused by portal hypertension which means one of your your main liver portals is oh. damaged and closing so it's you it's trying to pump normally and when it can't varicose veins form and one evening they burst, and uh, I was as close to death as you could possibly imagine. And uh, wow, it must have been scary. It wasn't. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. I didn't feel much. Um, when I got to the hospital, they underestimated my my actual weight a bit. They went by a chart. And so they gave me, they wanted to put me in an induced coma, which they kind of did because I couldn't move physically, but I was, what they didn't know is I was still aware, you know, of what was happening around me. My eyes may have been closed, but I could hear everything, you know, and even when there's things like he's bleeding faster than we can put it in, you know, like where the fuck is that blood from Rocky view? You know, mm -hmm. blood pressure is 20 over five. And, it, and that's when I thought to myself, geez, I could die here. And at that point, things were going through my head. Um, I can't die now. I, you know, I can't leave the people that love me. Um, I haven't seen the new Star Trek movie. This happened in 2008 and, and the 2009 Star Trek film hadn't come out. But all the time that I was doing this, um, outside my front deck, there was a phenomena that I was witnessing for about a year. And I first noticed it when I was closing the blinds one night because this light came down and went back up and I said, what? So I went outside and there's this ball of light moving up. Okay, fine. Moved itself into a stationary position. And I, I had seen it uh, subsequently move itself into place in the night sky. So I, I had made a videotape. I, I, I put my camera on sticks and I, you know, zoomed in and waited. And, you know, and I didn't really expect much when I played the video back. But what was happening was phenomenal this thing would expand, disappear, um, all sorts of things. And for some reason that was going through my mind. I could see this, what I call a craft. Mm, um, yeah, expanding in my mind and, you know, and that sort of thing. So when I, when I woke up, I was, um, apologetic I think and strangely I had been you know, months before I had my uncle who had passed come to me and tell me to smarten up you know you could die it was in a dream you know very wow. vivid vivid dream and I was told well what ended up happening was that I, 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 that I was there for weeks in intensive care and that kind of thing I came home, and the very day that I came home, I went back down to my basement where I had the initial bleed and bled again. I knew it was coming because you get this overwhelming feeling of darkness come over you, dizziness, and I realized I was bleeding again. So this time, um, the first time, I was 
laying in a pool of blood. When I say hemorrhaging, I mean it was coming out everywhere. Wow. You know, out the butt, out the mouth, everywhere. And I remember trying to make it to the washroom and, and falling, and my elbow hit the, the floor, which is basically linoleum over concrete. Ooh. And it really hurt. And if I hadn't had done that, I don't think I'd be here tonight. Because it was the pain that kind of woke me up. And I looked and I, I saw blood everywhere. And I thought, I had to make a choice. Make right. it to the phone or die. Which is strange because I've always been sort of a self-destructive person. Or I was. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to be here. You know, was trying, even as a little boy, when I would go to sleep at night, I'd have a humidifier going. And I would lay there and pretend those were the engines of the Starship Enterprise. And I could picture moving away from this planet, getting the hell out of here. Um, so I was a very self-destructive individual, um, which is gone now. Uh, but, well, go ahead. It's interesting that it was the pain that woke you up because that's almost significant in the way, well, not almost significant, it is significant in the way that sometimes it is pain that mm. does wake us up. It could be, but more so maybe an emotional pain, but for you it was all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, during the time that I actually awoke, um, I was going through a, tremendous amount of emotional uh, turmoil, heartbreak. Um, but, uh, you know, they say near-death experiences often will mm -hmm. you know, cause you to, to awaken. And uh, so, yeah, I, you know, there's, there was a, certainly a, a path that led me to all of this. And I had to make the decision right there and then, do I want to crawl for that phone and get help or not? Because it would have been very easy to lay my head down and I simply would have bled out. Wow. And then I realized that, no, I can't. And so I called for help and when the ambulance drivers came, the EMTs, um, they couldn't bring a gurney down the narrow staircase. And they said, Mr. Sato, can you crawl to the top of the stairs? And I think that's the hardest thing I ever did. Um, and then, you know, they, I, I, that's about all I remember until being... Uh, in the hospital. Um, and, that, you know, and I often wondered why they wouldn't want to come down and help me. But what I wasn't aware of while I was in the hospital was 15 minutes after they took me, a whole team of people in outbreak suits from this, you know, um, our version of the CDC right. came to the home and were looking um, because they didn't know if it could be Ebola or whatever. Okay. And I'm thinking about my, my poor aunt who uh, lives here with me. Uh, her and my father had to clean up all the blood. So there's probably a good reason I was, you know, apologetic when I woke up. Um, I imagine. <laughs> well, that sure seems like a... A situation that would definitely start making you think about life and where you're going and, uh, you know, maybe time to make some changes, uh, which is obviously where, where you went with that. Um, so I guess I'll move on to some other questions for now. Um, what, what did you believe growing up? You know, if they make about religion or uh, just whatever, what were your thoughts as a child growing up about life? I was always uh, 
a staunch believer in science. Religion never meant too much to me. Um, I believed in the scientific method, which basically is, you know, the best possible conclusion given the best possible evidence when the best of it, you know, best evidence is available. Right. Uh, if I could, if, if I couldn't observe it, it wasn't real. And of course, the other thing about the scientific method I'll, that I'll just express now is that it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. You know, our understanding, as our understanding grows of observ uh, observable phenomena, you know, we look at quantum physics now, and a lot of it isn't observable. But we do know things, that there are certain particles that don't even react until you are looking at them. Which implies that, you know, uh, we can create, we are creators, we are co-creators. And, you know, we can adjust our reality. So, you know, that's, it's, a, it's looking at science from a new perspective. But that was my predominant, uh, my predominant thought pattern growing up. Did you, you have know? any unusual experiences in your childhood? Oh, hell yeah. One of my earliest memories was being in Brandon, Manitoba in our family home. And one fall evening, I remember looking out the window and up pops this head. And it wasn't, it was the best I could describe to you. And, and some people will say, well, this is, you know, that was a childhood imagination thing, you know. But it was like, like an amphibious, an, an amphibian human cross breed. Um, that spoke to me telepathically and it said, don't worry, I'm not here for you. I'm here for your father. And then it turned and it bound away. I could jump the way, think of how a frog jumps. Interesting. And it bounded away into the night. I remember that, that that's one of the first experiences. Um, oh yeah, I've had, uh, I've, I've had experiences of, I'm, I'm sort of um, clairvoyant, always have been. I'd be riding my little bike down the street, my three-speed, and I would get a thought like, you're going to find money. And I'd stop my bike and I'd look down and there was a, you know, a $5 bill, which uh, in 1971 <laughs> dollars was, you know, not bad, you know. Wow. Um, that's, little things that's like that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Synchronicities, a lot of synchronicities. What happened one evening after I awoke was I had a very, very vivid dream. And it was a download. And basically, it was how everything in my life connected and led me to the, the present moment where I was. Now, do I remember a lot of it? No. Mm. But okay. because this happened, this happened. Because this happened, this happened. Because this person was no longer in your life, this happened. Because you were no longer in this person's life, this happened. And it was just this string of chronological events uh, in linear time that, you know, kind of showed me all of that. Um, and I haven't, I don't receive many downloads in my sleep, but I do remember getting another one that was all about sacred geometry. And, and it was focusing on uh, what uh, Nikola Tesla um, was so adamant about, you know, the sacredness of the numbers three, six, and nine. And Tesla said, you know, if you understand the secrets of three, six, and nine, you understand the universe and getting this download. So, you know, it was things like I woke up thinking about it going, Oh, okay. You know, six times six is 36. Three plus six equals nine. Nine times nine is 81. Eight plus one equals nine. Four times three is 12. Two plus one is three. You can only do it with those numbers. Interesting. 
Mm -hmm. That's that's fascinating. You know, so. Um, well, with your dreaming, do you, like, as an adult now, experience um, lucid dreaming? Mm -hmm. Or what, or, you know, what are some of your experiences with that? Lucid dreaming? Yes. Not, at all, not as often as I'd like. Okay. Um, one of the big ones that I had, my, my best friend passed away. And it was about three weeks later, I had this extremely vivid dream. I could taste, smell. Mm. It, you know, it was like I was there. Yes. And we were outside the crossroads market where we used to like to go and, and shop for, you know, fruit and veggies and stuff like that. So I'm sitting there. There's a guy. There was an Aboriginal man who used to sit out there with a guitar, has a guitar case open. People would throw money in. He's playing. He's playing an Elvis song. Are you lonesome tonight? <laughs> and uh, I'm smoking a cigarette. I can taste the cigarette. I can feel the cigarette in my lungs. And I look over and there's my friend Andrew who had passed, only he wasn't. It was, it was like he was a more perfect version of himself. Wasn't wearing glasses. Um, that's the best I can describe it. He looked better than he ever did in, uh, in third dimensional reality. Um, and the message he gave me is, don't be afraid. You can do anything you want. Well, that's a good message. <laughs> it was. And, uh, and then I woke up and I thought about it. And then synchronistically, I went downstairs and the TV was on. And Oprah was talking to Whitney Houston's daughter and said, have you had a dream visitation from your mother? And she goes, oh, yeah. And, uh, and Oprah explains, a dream visitation is, you know, shortly after somebody passes, they come to you in a dream. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'll deliver a message to you. And she even mentioned that, you know, they won't look like, they'll look like a better version of themselves. So I'm standing it. there, you know, kind of, you know, going, oh, okay. You know, oddly enough, you know, when these things happen, I, I kind of take them, you know, I don't freak out. You know, there's a number of times where, um, I'll share one story, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, a number of years back, I was under a psychic attack. And it was to the point where I was getting nosebleeds a lot. For no apparent reason, I'd just be sitting here, and all of a sudden, blood would start pouring from my nose. The dreaming, um, it's like the whatever entity or consciousness um, had attached itself, knew how to um, instill fear. And I'm not going to get into things like Lush right now or anything else. I mean, that's very third dimensional. But um, like an example, I'm in a friend's high-rise apartment the screen door to the balcony is open and my little pup at the time, Charlie goes, jumps on the deck and goes right between the metal slats of the balcony oh. and falls 30 stories, you know, things like that. And I'd wake up like, Whoa, fuck, you know? <laughs> so it's like, well, I, I got it. I, you know, and I tried to clear myself, but I wasn't very good at it at the time. Okay. And, uh, so I called uh, an acquaintance of ours, Brian Kenworthy. And I uh, said, do you know anybody in, in Calgary who can clear me? And so he <coughs> said, yeah, let me, let me call her. So he calls her and he says, yeah, she's going to work on it right now. So does she need any information or anything? Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. And there, her response was, no, I've never seen this type of energy before. I can't do anything with it. Long story short, it got looked after. 
Um, but it was maybe four months later, um, I was helping out at Angel's Cafe, sitting outside on a nice day with a table, trying to sell some books to raise money for the new Angel's building. And this woman comes along and she stops. And she walks over to me and she goes, you're James. And I said, yes. She goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Brian Kenworthy's friend. She said, he had me do some work on you. And I said, what, you just what, recognize my energy? <laughs> and, you know, it was That's nice to meet you. Thank you, you know. But, I mean, you know, weird synchronicities. And, I'll, you know, we'll later on get to the, you know, the big one that happened to me that, um, but, yeah, so please, please continue. Thank you for allowing me to, you know, share that oh, anecdote. No, I, it's a, they're quite all right. I, it's quite fascinating. Love hearing interesting stories like that. Um, so... What did I want to ask you next? Did you develop any unusual abilities um, other than the the, uh, the obvious ones that you've mentioned already, or have any had any uh, interesting experiences just sort of as of late? You know, the last several years of your life. Well, yeah. I mean, I remember, um, and anybody can do this. Take any kind of crystal. You see, you see a chemtrail being laid down. And, and I'm just going to say this because I, mean, I, I know a lot of people are going to watch this. If, and if you're watching this, I'm sure that you know, there's, some of you are already awake. But some, of you, some, some will watch because it's just, I post it on Facebook and they're curious to see what my interview is about. So if you're not awake, right. you, know, if, if, you, you, know, you may scoff at this, whatever, depending on what your path is. Um, but chemtrails, you know, they are pretty harmful. Um, and people often say, well, they're contrails. You know, no, they're not contrails. Why? If they're contrails, why do they happen during all four seasons? A contrail is like you walking out in a cold day and breathing. And you can see your breath, right? A breath doesn't form clouds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, walking down the street with this, your breathing, a trail of your breathing following you you know right um, and AKA, aka solar radium uh solar what do they call that radiation management or geoengineering because mm -hmm. uh, they have actually on the computer have internet have uh the powers that think they are <laughs> have uh made sort of made fun or made light of the uh the, the cam trail well, so, you know, again, again, it's just, you know, most people will just look at that because, you know, most people are just conditioned by any kind of mainstream media. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, they just buy into their narrative. You well, know, if it's, it's the first time for people to actually hear of this, go, don't look up chemtrails, go look up geoengineering, and then you'll, it'll take you down and it'll give you the, the both, both sides of it. And you decide. <laughs> yeah, use your own discernment discernment you know. okay but Wait. no here's an easy thing take any kind of crystal in your hand hold it point at the chemtrail and intend that it dissipate and be neutralized and watch yeah. the first time i actually did it i went holy shit no no of course i don't have to do that anymore i can do it now with my mind but um and people will scoff at that because it's unobservable you know, um, people often enough. ask, you know, why don't you, uh, you know, if you've got these abilities, why don't you use them on people? You know, make additional money. And it's, well, first of all, um, I personally will not. Um, there's a saying, never profit or pay money to or for the truth. So I don't, you know, uh, plus I don't want to be anybody's guru. I'm not a, I'm just a guy from Lethbridge, Alberta. You know, I'm a small town boy. I'm not a guru of any kind. Um, 
but if I was to say to you, Wanda, okay, you've given me $50. I'm going to clear you now. You know, well, okay, we're done. And you'd say, and I'd say, I notice you haven't transferred the money. And you could just look at me and go, oh, it's done. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, and it's funny because you look at people like Chris Kaler from Winnipeg who, who uses an entirely different modality for quantum healing than I do. Um, Referring back to the bit about the higher self, I, I synchronistically stumbled upon um, a video, an interview with uh, Dr. Marie Batch. She's from uh, Australia, I believe. And she, in the interview, Frank, it's just talking the way we are, you know. And she, the interviewer asked, you know, what are some of the things that your higher self has told you? I'm laying in bed listening to this podcast and I actually sat up because almost word for word, some of the things that she was told were exactly, exactly what I heard, what was spoken to me. So it's, you know, like I go, okay, well, I guess that's a little affirmation, you know? Oh, you mean spoken to you from your higher self? Yes, exactly okay. the same words, the same phrasing, the whole works. So mm -hmm. that was an affirmation for me. Um, and if you're one of the ones watching and you're, you're skeptical, um, you have every right, you know, that's your choice. You know, you can, you can look into, you can investigate what I'm saying further or just write it off as nonsense. You know, I, I can't determine your path for you, but um, at least do the research, do a little research um, because it's not just me having these experiences, it's not just, you know, the two of us sitting here having these experiences, they're being experienced by millions of people worldwide, millions and more all the time. So again, you know, it, it, if, if it resonates with you, do a little bit of research. So all we can do is, you know, hope that something comes along and, you know, maybe guides you on a new journey. So. Well, that's uh, that's good advice. Um, did you go to any healers or psychics or have any hypnosis done? Mm -hmm. And again, you know, some of the things that you know sound unbelievable. You know, if you if I would have if I was gonna if I was gonna say what I'm gonna say now to my younger self, I don't know if I would have believed. Um, one evening, I was, uh, there were so many synchronicities. Uh, for some reason, you know, uh, when you, you know, when you go into your YouTube app, it'll say, recommended for you. <laughs> and it was about past life regression. And there was three or four things that happened uh, on my social media feed and everything. And they all refer to past life regression. So I said, okay, okay, I get the message. So I went and had a, um, a session and, uh, and again, this was quite, um, fairly early on, you know, my understanding then wasn't what it is today. So in, in the, in the session, you walk down, a, um, a corridor and there's doors multiple doors on each side of the hallway and is there one you know is there a particular one you'd like to go to and there was one that the door was kind of emitting a glow so i went in and i couldn't see much i was in a small almost like a thatched hut there was radio equipment, and when I looked down at myself, I was wearing khakis and boots. I would say probably World War II. And I looked around, and there was really nothing to see. And Dominica, who had put me under hypnosis, um, said, okay, well, if you want to leave that room and go find another, go. You know, so I leave, and I walk down the hall. 
And there's one that's actually kind of glowing, really glowing. So I went in there and instantly, um, my, my perspective from my site was the base of trees. I was in kind of a forest setting and I was weeping. And Dominica could kind of tell I was agitated. And she said, if you want to change your view, just move up. And so I did, and I was laying there, um, clutching a female. I had my hand around the back of her head, and I was wailing. And, and what I could see was there was, her legs were open, there was a pool of blood, and there was a, a baby with the umbilical and the placenta laying on the grass crying. And I realized that she was dead. She bled out during birth. And I remember screaming, and I guess I, Dominica pulled me out of it right away. And when I awoke, I could still feel it. And I asked my higher self, I said, why on earth would you show me that? And it was like, well, you know, you think you've, you're having problems now. You've been through worse. And for about 10 minutes afterwards, I could sit with Dominica and I could talk um, about the experience. I remember um, I resented the girl, the daughter because she took the love, my love away. Um, I even, I can't remember it now, but I remember the girl's name. Um, that's the other thing. I mean, the more, the more that I stay present, the less I can remember about the past. And I, in this particular case, I wish I could, you know, be of more um, detail for that. But yes, there was that. And uh, what was the second part of the question? Past life regression. Oh, Matt, you've you got me so intrigued in that story. <laughs> um, just asking about if you've been to for different to healers or um, uh, hypnosis or to psychic healers or any in, in unusual experiences with that, or if you have. Well, the biggest turning point in my awakening, I think, was a woman. And again, you know, Brian Kenworthy recommended this young lady to me. So I booked an appointment. And I didn't expect for this very young, kind of petite girl to come out and greet me. So we went into her office, and she closed the door. There was, um, you know, the the vertical blinds, the kind of metal ones. They were uh, at the big window. And we sat there. Now, her name is Rebecca. And Rebecca is a channel, and she channels, oh, I don't know how many. She's had the ability, she says, since she was three years old. Um, So when she's working on me, there was events happening, like the room kind of shook. Um, the entire fucking room shook. And she managed to clear a lot of stuff for me. And when she was done, I laughed. I laughed and laughed in joy, total joy. And then she said, there's a couple of things that you should know. She said, first of all, um, when you were in the hospital, having the bleeding looked after, you know, she said, you, you told me about the thing that appeared. She goes, the reason that was there was because um, 
the I'm trying to remember the word she used. I think it was the, the entities or the basically the people from the craft. And, you know, I'm just going to say either they're, um, you know, um, alien or, you know, multidimensional, right. uh, tried to end me. But Source wouldn't allow it. Um, but they were allowed to mess with me. Oh, interesting. And everything that happens, of course, happens for a reason. Learning. Mm -hmm. um, Why do you think they were trying to end you? I mean, that's... I think that I was some, some... Maybe some run-in on a <laughs> past life somewhere. <laughs> No, I, I have no idea. But, but I had my soul reading at that time, and I'm Pleiadian Angel. Okay. And Angel is something I've never heard of. And I, I asked her, I said, what is, you know, I mean, I, if she would have said, well, you're Pleiadian, Arcturian, or, you know, whatever. You, mm -hmm. know, I, you know, I could relate. But Angel, she goes, you're the right hand of source. I went, okay. And, and I went looking. Um, I mean, I remember asking Simon Parks, sending in queries to his program regarding this. Um, you know, what does it mean? What does it mean? And my questions never gotten answered or read on air. Um, my uh, requests for a session with Simon have always just kind of disappeared or have been ignored. So I go, okay, well, universe is telling me something. Okay. Um, but having done some research on my own, um, I went to a lady who, um, there was a lady who, again, is a past life regression person. Uh, and, uh, and she says she's ran into about five people whose souls are half angel. And her conclusion was, is that sometimes for whatever reason, you know, um, you may be an angel from a higher realm who's never um, existed in physicality before. And because of the importance of what is going to happen, um, you know, we choose to be sent. Take that however you want, I, you know. Do I feel okay. particularly angelic? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so speaking of what is going to happen, there's been a lot of buzz and a lot of talk about 3D, third dimension, going into fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and all of that for humanity. Um, would, you, would you like to, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, the, the shift is coming. Oh. Without doubt, and, you know, I won't call it ascension. I won't call it whatever. I mean, uh, pe you know, people often have that negative sort of view. If I was to say, oh, we're going to ascend, you know, it sounds like you're like, an, um, you know, you're going to poison all your followers or something. Um, you know, this is not, you know, I mean, it makes you sound Jim Jones cultian. It sounds like religion. And I don't wish personally to use those terms uh, my higher self just says shift the shift of consciousness the shift um, because really I mean all time and space exists in one spot you know linear time as we know it here doesn't exist and I think it was Alex Collier who who said when he was um, talking to the Andromedans I said, you know, you've managed to actually become quite good at measuring something that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, so true. It's yeah. so true. So it's not like it's this ascension that we're going to. It's a shift because everything is here. Everything is all in one time and one place. It's just a shift. And, it, and it's a shift in our consciousness. 
a wave of energy is going to hit this planet. And people, you know, and, I mean, it's all, you know, you think it's tumultuous now with the energies that are coming in. Um, this will be the, the kind that may just knock you on your ass, you know. Um, and once that happens, you know, veils of forgetfulness will be removed. Um, it sort of almost reminds me of that movie, The, the Giver, um, mm. where it ends, it's the, the, the young man goes through the barriers and once he gets to the other side, it's, it's an awakening for everyone and it, and it goes out like a wave. Is that kind of what you see sort of happening? Mm -hmm. And and what does that mean for for us, for humanity? Um, we move into a different type of existence. This third dimension. The third dimension is all about duality. Um, which isn't to say there's not duality in the fifth, but a different kind. Um, we're moving into a lighter uh, dimensional experience where humanity, the gifts that you have will be readily available to you. We are creators. An example of this is when people go through regressive hypnosis and they discuss th their experiences in 5D, and each is a little bit different. To some, it's cities, mass mm -hmm. cities of joy, everything is good, the ability to create. You know, we are creators now. We can create our own realities. Um, but there, it's instantaneous. There's not this waiting for divine timing or or cosmic timing. Um, so, and we'll be part of the galactic community who are waiting for us. So it's an entirely different kind of life than we have here, you know? Um, and I think that's why people have, a, a, you know, like when you, when you have, um, when you have clear cognizance and you're able to see um, more clearly the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only a hint. Our 3D understanding or our 4D understanding of the fifth is limited. And it, naturally, because there's a lot of things our minds, in, you know, in this, in this dimension can't comprehend. Um, so, you know, I mean, so like I say that, you know, there are some people living in large cities. There are some people who create their reality to be in nature with uh, their divine partner, things like that, you know. So, you know, it, it's, it's the ability to create, you know. So that's why I know that someday I'll stand on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> it's my reality, you know. But uh, well, I, I can totally re totally relate to that uh, Star Trek fan from like <laughs> six years old or seven or whatever. It's dating myself, but oh yes. And James T. Kirk was the love of my life. <laughs> that sparkle in his eye. But uh, anyway, um, I think for this session we'll wrap it up and. Uh, I've got many, many more questions for you and we'll... Okay, well, I'll look forward to part two. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today, James. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure being had. <laughs> right on. Okay, you take care of yourself and until next time, stay conscious. You betcha. Ciao. Bye-bye now. All right, so wrapping it up today. I wanted to thank you, Jim, for joining us today and sharing your experience, as I've already said, but, and your wisdom. 
And until next time with Consciousness Chronicles, take care and stay awake.